It's now possible to generate vector graphics using a simple text prompt straight inside of Adobe Illustrator. I've been testing it this morning and here are the results. Here is a set of really cool looking cartoon themed graphics. These were all done with the same prompt. We've got a dragon, dinosaur and two types of dog breeds. In this case, I generated silhouettes of motorbikes and then placed them onto vintage sunsets. The sunsets were made by me, but the silhouettes were AI generated, which can be really useful for print on demand. You can also do seamless vector patterns like this fruit example which is super exciting. I also generated this very minimalistic looking icon of a fox which could even potentially work as a logo design. And lastly here we've got a cheeseburger which looks super accurate and tasty at the same time. If you want to test out this new AI vector generator you need to have Adobe Illustrator installed and I will leave a link to this page right here in the description where you can actually sign up to a free seven day trial with this button and that way you can test out the features before you have to commit to Illustrator. Once you've opened up Adobe Illustrator, I would recommend heading over to the window and drop down. Then if you scroll down a bit, you will find the text to vector graphic feature right here. And clicking on this will open up a separate window with the new feature. You can resize this as well, make it bigger. And that way our life will be easier when generating these vectors. Now, to briefly explain this window, you've got a few different options right here. So at the top, we've got the type of vector graphic that you want to generate. The subject one uh, generates these sorts of graphics and also the same as in the intro with the hamburger or the different dog breeds, the dinosaur that I showed you. And so that is what subject is for. Then we've got scenery, icon and pattern. I will go through these later on in the video, but we'll start off with subject because that's quite handy for print on demand. You've also got a button to match the active airport style. So if this is turned on, then everything that you generate will be similar to the previous graphics on your artboard. So that's handy if you need um, a similar style, similar color scheme. Then we've got the prompt box down here. So this is where you enter whatever you want to generate. Essentially, you've also got a ton of sample prompts from Adobe directly. And if you click on any of these, it will instantly paste the prompt into this box and start generating a graphic. There's a few more buttons here, which I will explain later in the video as well. But let's just start off with generating one of these sample prompts. So I quite like this one with the dragon because it helped me generate some of those dog graphics in the intro. As you can see, it is now creating four separate vectors for this. It's pretty quick, very impressive, the speed of this. And once it's done, you can flick through these by clicking onto any of these examples and sort of choose which one is your favorite. If you want to use multiple results, what you can do is you can drag one of these aside, then drag the second one that you want to use onto the app board, and then you can draw it out by clicking and dragging like so. And obviously the benefit of having these vector graphics straight away is that we can now use the direct selection tool to make adjustments to these different curves with the handles. We can easily change the color of these different objects and elements. We can remove or erase shapes with the Shape Builder tool. And one of the biggest pros is that we can scale these graphics to a massive size and they will stay clear um, because it is a vector file, not a PNG or JPEG raster image. So that is definitely cool. And now if you wanted to adjust or sort of use this sample prompt, for your own niches or your own topics that you want to design for, you can just head back to this prompt bar right here. Let's say we want to take out dragon blowing fire and we can put cute baby pug as an example. I'll leave the rest of the prompt the same because this is what Adobe has given us. Then if you hit generate, it will once again start with this process. Um, you can also hit cancel sort of midway through, by the way, I've tried that a few times and it still gives you the result up to that point and oftentimes it is a bit more minimalistic um, when you stop it halfway through. But here we go, those are some interesting pug graphics, look pretty neat and definitely useful um, for POD. Another thing you can do is, let's say you want to match the style of this graphic over here for a new prompt, then you can just select this option over here, the style picker, then click on the graphic that you want to match. Now it will say your selected style has been added to the style picker, and if we make a change to this prompt now, so let's say cute baby Labrador, leave the rest of the prompt the same and hit generate. It should now 
try its best to copy this same style as we've got with the pug. There we go, it's definitely taking that into consideration. As you can see, we've got the same sort of white stroke outline. We've got uh, this circle at the bottom for the shadow and some of the other ones also look fairly similar, which is super handy. Um, that Illustrator actually does this or follows the style very accurately. You can also bring up the sample prompts at any point because right now, as you can see, this has sort of got the history of my generations right here. But if you want to go back to the sample prompts, just click on this little icon and you can choose any of them with these shortcut buttons right here. We've also got sort of a line drawing. We've got a more bland illustrations on a white background and this school prompt is also quite good. I've tried that before. And then you've also got the settings button where you can adjust the details. So if you want something with less detail, as more minimalistic, turn this down. If you want a very intricate design that has more sort of texture to it, more colors, more detail, then turn this up towards the number five. Let's go over these different types then. So I'm going to change this to scene where you will see a variety of different sample prompts. These I think work better for poster design or if, you, if you're creating illustrations for people because they're sort of full size images with a background. Uh, they do have some nice results though, um, but I have found they're maybe not as accurate as the subject type, but it is only a beta feature, so I'm sure this is going to get better. Um, I think for scenery, for landscapes, uh, this can definitely be a massive time saver. As you can see, um, these results are pretty neat. Then we've got Icon next. As you would expect, this is more of a minimalistic style. I could see these working as logos. We've got a sort of fox right here, geometric. We've got a butterfly, very colorful. This sunflower makes me think of the groovy types of t-shirt designs that we can see selling very well on Amazon. Um, so maybe you can create little objects to decorate your designs with as well. Let's actually try this and type in the same prompt. So geometric sunflower, and maybe I'll add with a smiley face. I'll turn off the match active adbot style because we don't want to actually match this scenery graphic right here and then hit generate. And also it tells you right here that you can write a prompt in a hundred different languages, which is super handy for anyone who's, you know, not very good at English and wants to maybe type it in in their own native language. Now it's not taking the smiley face into uh, the graphic right here. But these are definitely some cool looking minimalistic um, icons for sunflowers. And I could still see these working on a postcard, on a t-shirt design, a sticker, or many other applications. And lastly, let's head to the pattern section. This is also super exciting because these patterns are not just a vector format, but they're also seamless. So I'm in order to use these. Let's draw out a rectangle right here so we can draw, cover the entire artboard. And uh, let's just click on one of the sample prompts. Um, let's do the one with the tropical forest leaves at the bottom. There we go. That's given us some colorful results back. Um, there's a few things you can do with this. You can resize this like so, but you could also um, click into the scale tool over here. You can click, double click onto it to bring up some extra options. If we turn off the transform objects option down here and then change uh, the uniform scale. So if you turn this down, as you can see, it's going to zoom out the pattern, which means you will have more and more leaves. So if you have a massive object to cover in print on demand, then zooming this pattern out might be useful. You can also apply the pattern to custom shapes. So whether it is one of these geometric ones like a star, or if you have like a custom shape of maybe an animal or an item of food, a flag, you can always apply these patterns to your shapes like this. You can also click more options to add the pattern to your swatches um, over in the swatches panel. And one last prompt that I wanted to show you is this one right here, black minimalistic silhouette of a motorbike. So you could use this for many different objects and these silhouettes can be quite handy for print on demand as a design element, or you can add them to a vintage sunset and those sorts of designs can definitely do very well. As you can see, if we drag this off the app board, there is quite a bit of white on some of these designs still, but you could technically remove that with the direct selection tool. And then you've only got a few highlights left over. For example, here I've gone ahead and added a vintage sunset in the background of this graphic. And now you could easily add some text to this and you've got your design ready um, to be exported at the correct size because everything is in a vector format. This sunset, by the way, is vector as well. And it's actually part of one of my vintage sunset bundles, which I will leave a link to in the description. So if you're asking me about my opinion for this new Adobe feature, I think it's absolutely amazing. It makes me super excited for the future because if this gets even better with
with the accuracy in the results, then we will have an amazing tool at our hands with Illustrator because it seamlessly works with a new workflow. I've been designing t-shirts and selling them with Adobe Illustrator for years now and being able to generate the graphics as vectors inside of Illustrator is massive. You don't have to mess around with vectorizers, with background removers, you've got everything right there ready. And I know currently it might not live up to some of the other tools out there like Dali 3 or Midjourney in terms of how aesthetically pleasing the graphics are, but I'm sure with Adobe's budget, they will get there in no time. So this is definitely exciting news. I'm going to integrate this into my design process already because it's so much easier than going through multiple steps with, with other AI tools to then eventually pull the files into Illustrator. If you are completely new to using Adobe Illustrator, you would massively benefit from watching this video next where I share seven hidden tips and features, including another recent AI tool that they added to Adobe Illustrator.